Japan is a megalithic culture. Many of the megaliths in Japan have never really been properly studied. Beneath the serene landscapes of Japan lies a mystery that challenges the very essence of human history. Imagine stumbling upon an architectural marvel that predates even the legendary Great Flood. How did our ancestors engineer such a colossal feat without modern technology? What secrets does this ancient structure hold about the capabilities of early humans? Join us as we unravel scientists' discovery of a pre-flood structure in Japan that man could never have built. It was the view, very firm view of archaeologists, that there had been no megalithic architecture anywhere on Earth. And when I say megalithic, I mean literally big stones, stone circles, huge constructions, nothing like that before at the very, very earliest 6,000 years ago. Central to my work was the notion of a global cataclysm, roughly 12,500, 12,800 years ago. They are not saying that it also wiped out a, a lost, advanced civilization of prehistory. I'm saying that. Japan's ancient stone legacy. Imagine standing before a vast network of underground caves stretching thousands of square meters into the earth, carved from Oya stone, a volcanic material unlike any other. These caverns at the Oya Stone Quarry in Utsunomiya were crafted ages ago, when the tools and technology were rudimentary at best. It seemed nearly impossible for people then to sculpt such a massive and intricate structure, yet they accomplished it through sheer human effort. Today, despite our modern technology and engineering capabilities, recreating such a marvel remains a daunting task. The quarry is a symbol of natural beauty and human ingenuity, beckoning us to delve into its depths and uncover the secrets hidden within its vast chambers and imposing walls. I think we're confronted by an enormous mystery with megalithic sites all around the world, uh, and we don't understand them properly. The Oya Stone Quarry holds a deep historical significance in Japan's architectural heritage, marking the transition from local stone extraction to widespread industrial use. The exact start date of the quarry's operations is not well documented, but evidence suggests that people began extracting Oya stone on a small scale around the Heian period. This period, spanning from 794 to 1185 AD, followed the Nara period when Emperor Kamu relocated Japan's capital to Heian Kyo, which is now known as Kyoto. The Heian period is renowned as the pinnacle of Japan's imperial court celebrated for its artistic achievements, particularly in poetry and literature. This period of peace and cultural refinement laid the foundation for the widespread appreciation of Oya stone, which was valued for its unique properties and used in the construction of significant imperial and noble structures. Oya stone gained renown for its unique qualities, which made it ideal for crafting intricate religious structures such as temples and shrines, as well as detailed statues that adorned these sacred sites. Delving into the rich historical background of Oya stone reveals intriguing details and compelling theories. The quarry operations began amidst a period of imperial consolidation and cultural flourishing heavily influenced by Tang Dynasty aesthetics from China. Initially used for constructing foundations and lower building structures in local villages, Oya stone gained popularity due to its accessibility and ease of initial carving. What sets Oya stone apart is its unique property. Initially soft and pliable when freshly quarried, it gradually hardens when exposed to air, transforming into a resilient material suitable for enduring structures. By the late Heian period, Oya stone had spread beyond local regions to become a staple in significant construction projects across Japan, including temples, shrines, and statues. Historical texts emphasize its role in state-sponsored building projects, highlighting its increasing importance in the architectural landscape of the time. This rising demand led to a substantial expansion of quarry operations. Initially, Quarrying techniques were simple and manual, but they evolved into more organized mining efforts involving larger labor forces. This expansion not only met the growing architectural needs, but also spurred local economic development. It created numerous job opportunities and contributed significantly to the prosperity of surrounding communities. 
A captivating theory about the Oya stone quarry proposes that it was initially discovered and developed under the patronage of Japan's imperial family. This intriguing idea suggests that the imperial family used the quarry to showcase their divine right to rule, constructing temples and palaces with this exceptional stone. The widespread use of Oya stone in projects commissioned by the imperial and noble families during the Heian period lends support to this theory. The stone's unique qualities and the majestic appearance it bestowed upon buildings would have symbolized the emperor's celestial and esteemed status, perfectly aligning with the imperial ambitions of that era. This fascinating hypothesis adds an enriching layer of historical and cultural significance to the already compelling story of the Oya stone quarry, shaping Japan's cultural landscape. During the Edo period, Oya stone played an increasingly vital role. The Edo period, also known as the Tokugawa period, spanned from 1603 to 1868 in Japan's history. During this time, Japan was governed by the Tokugawa shogunate and its 300 regional daimyo. Following the turbulent Sengoku period, the Edo era was marked by significant economic development, rigorous social hierarchy, closed-off foreign policies, a stable population, extended periods of peace, and a flourishing cultural scene, often fondly called Uido by the locals. As demand grew, the shogunate enforced stricter rules to efficiently oversee quarry operations. These regulations aimed to ensure that the stone was extracted at sustainable rates, preserving it for future generations to use. Around this time, a visionary trader emerged who oversaw the entire process from mining to distribution, revolutionizing the use of Oya stone in constructing structures like shrine walls and private homes. This distinctive stone helped shape the character of Utsunomiya, defining the cityscape. The Oya stone industry thrived even more during the Meiji period, spanning 1868 to 1912, boosted by advancements in transportation such as railroads. Large quantities of Oya stone were transported to Tokyo and Yokohama, where it became integral to urban development as Japan modernized. The quarrying of Oya stone intensified as mining techniques advanced, including the use of improved chisels and more efficient methods for extracting large stone blocks. The expanding cities required substantial quantities of durable materials, leading to the widespread use of Oya stone not only in walls, but also in bridges and other infrastructure projects needing resilient materials capable of withstanding both the elements and fire hazards. When comparing Oya stone to European limestone, which served similar purposes, both materials share the characteristic of strengthening over time, making them ideal for enduring constructions. However, while limestone in Europe was prized for its practicality and aesthetic appeal, the use of Oya stone in Japan was deeply intertwined with the country's cultural and religious traditions, blending utilitarian functionality with spiritual significance. This distinction not only underscores the practical importance of Oya stone, but also highlights its profound role in shaping Japan's cultural heritage. Utsunomiya's Oya Stone Quarry Nestled in Utsunomiya, Tochigi Prefecture, the Oya Stone Quarry offers more than a mere glimpse into the world of mining. It unfolds a captivating blend of geology, history, and acoustics. Let's delve deeper into the intriguing details of its underground caverns, exploring their extensive history and unique attributes. These caverns form a vast subterranean network that has been meticulously shaped over centuries. In some areas, they plunge as deep as 60 meters, similar to the height of a towering 20-story building. This expansive and diverse landscape not only provides a window into the Earth's depths, but also preserves the tale of its past within its very walls. Adorned with the marks of pickaxes and chisels, the cavern walls vividly recount the evolution of mining techniques across different eras. Occasionally, Abandoned tools and artifacts left behind by miners enrich the quarry's historical narrative, offering tangible connections to its mining heritage. Moreover, the caverns showcase a wealth of natural and man-made formations featuring an array of colors, vein patterns, 
and mineral compositions. Each detail adds a layer to the region's geological history, revealing the dynamic processes that have shaped its underground terrain over millennia. Beyond their historical and visual allure, these caverns are renowned for their remarkable acoustic properties. The porous and dense nature of Oya stone absorbs and diffuses sound waves, creating an environment with minimal echo and pristine audio clarity. This acoustic characteristic enhances the sensory experience within the quarry, making it not only a visual marvel, but also an auditory delight for visitors exploring its depths. Comparing the Oya stone quarry to the ancient underground cities of Cappadocia in Turkey reveals intriguing differences and similarities. Both are carved directly into volcanic rock, but their purposes diverge significantly. While Cappadocia's caverns were designed for living and defense, equipped with homes, churches, and ventilation shafts, Oya's caverns were primarily used for industrial mining. One fascinating theory posits that Oya stone quarry's extensive network and depth could have provided strategic military advantages in historical conflicts. The complex layout and deep tunnels might have served as excellent hiding places or secret passages, aligning with Japan's historical use of landscape features in military strategy. Moreover, the Oya Stone Quarry has captured the imagination of the film and television industry due to its dramatic and otherworldly atmosphere. For instance, Martin Scorsese's Silence utilized the cavern's haunting backdrop to depict the rugged landscapes of 17th century Japan, enhancing the film's somber atmosphere. Though not filmed on site, the fortress-like environments in Inception evoke a monumental scale and intricate maze-like interiors reminiscent of the vast network of the Oya Stone Quarry, Resilience in Stone. In 1923, the Wright Building, the main structure of the Imperial Hotel in Hibiya, Tokyo, was completed. This architectural masterpiece was crafted by American architect Frank Lloyd Wright using a blend of reinforced concrete and Oya stone, a unique choice over traditional materials like granite or marble. Wright's innovative use of Japanese Oya stone in the building's decorative elements showcased its soft texture and ease of crafting. However, the building faced a significant test on September 1st of that same year when the Great Kanto Earthquake, measuring 7.9 in magnitude, struck during its opening ceremony. Remarkably, the sections of the building constructed with Oya stone remained largely unscathed, earning widespread acclaim for their remarkable earthquake resistance. Seiji Ryota from the Utsunomiya City Oya Stone Culture Promotion Council notes, this resilience made the Wright Building famous, highlighting Oya Stone's exceptional durability in seismic events. Subsequently, the main lobby of the Wright Building was relocated to Meiji Mura in Inuyama City, Aichi Prefecture, an open-air museum. Here visitors can still marvel at the intricate geometric carvings, exposed pillars, and other architectural details that utilize Oya Stone preserved in their original form to showcase its warmth and distinctive aesthetic. In the vicinity of Oya in Utsunomiya City, Tochigi Prefecture, there are unique opportunities for visitors to explore and appreciate Oya stone. One notable site is Senju Cannon, the main statue at Uyaji Temple, also known as Uya Cannon. This four-meter-tall statue, reportedly crafted by Kukai, the founder of the Shingon sect of Buddhism, is carved directly into the temple hall's rock wall. Surrounding it are 10 Buddha statues, including the central Senju Canon, all designated as a special historic site and important cultural properties by the national authorities. Aside from its historical use in traditional storehouses and walls, Oya Stone has found new applications in modern construction practices, as highlighted by Fukuda Tomomi, from the Utsunomiya City Oya Stone Culture Promotion Council. Recently, thin panels of Oya Stone have gained popularity as interior materials. The stone's natural porous structure is advantageous for humidity control, making it ideal for wall installations that help maintain comfortable indoor humidity levels. In 2018, Utsunomiya, home of Oya Stone Underground Adventure, was recognized as a Japan heritage site by the Agency for Cultural Affairs, underscoring Utsunomiya's rich Oya Stone culture.
Oya Stone remains a source of local pride, and efforts are ongoing to leverage its appeal for tourism and industry, contributing to the town's revitalization. Efforts continue to harness the enduring qualities of Oya Stone, a material cherished across generations for its unique characteristics and cultural significance. The modern mining process of Oya Stone begins with a specialized machine equipped with two sharp saw blades. These blades, akin to drills, are manually controlled to cut through the ground along a predetermined path. As the machine moves along rails, it meticulously slices through the earth, collecting small rock fragments into buckets. These fragments, smooth as fine cement powder, are carefully gathered by workers along the machine's route. Once the machine completes its path, it is relocated to another section of the quarry. Here, workers measure the newly exposed stone blocks with tape measures, inserting wedges to prevent them from colliding and potentially cracking under pressure. Crowbars are deftly used to separate these blocks, requiring just enough force to topple them onto vertical lines where they stand upright. Each stone is extracted with care, categorized by size and color for ease of handling. They are stacked into blocks and hoisted to the surface using a vertical line system, monitored closely via a camera system that ensures efficient transport from deep underground to ground level. The Wonders of the Oya History Museum For those who want to immerse themselves in the rich heritage of Oya Stone, the Oya History Museum offers a fascinating blend of a compact history museum and an expansive abandoned stone quarry. From the bus stop and parking lot, the road leading to the Oya History Museum winds between towering cliffs, their sharp angles creating an atmosphere similar to a colossal sculpture garden. The journey culminates at the museum entrance, a modest structure nestled at the valley's end, offering no inkling of the marvels awaiting inside. Upon paying admission, visitors descend a short staircase and are greeted by a breathtaking sight, the expansive galleries sprawling below ground level. As you step onto the floor 30 meters beneath the surface, a well-marked path illuminated by soft lights unfolds. It guides you through an intricate maze of chambers, each at varying depths, interconnected by a network of staircases and ramps reminiscent of an Escher painting. Amidst the Oya History Museum, numerous signs and charts, many in English, provide insightful explanations of the surroundings. A detailed map of the mine illustrates that the museum constitutes merely a portion of an expansive underground quarry spanning 20,000 square meters. Over seven decades, this quarry yielded an impressive 300,000 cubic meters of Oya stone. Massive 10-meter square stone pillars strategically spaced throughout the quarry stabilize its structure, preventing collapse. Within this webbed space, galleries vary widely in size and purpose. Some rival airplane hangars in their dimensions, having even served as manufacturing sites for aircraft during World War II. Others exude an aura reminiscent of cathedrals or intimate chapels, creating a diverse and atmospheric underground landscape. Artfully arranged lighting in various hues enhances the visual experience, casting intriguing shadows across the rugged quarry walls. These walls themselves are a canvas of history, bearing intricate geometric patterns etched by chisels and power saws. These patterns evoke abstract art, adding a layer of artistic intrigue to the industrial setting. Amidst these cavernous expanses, remnants of bygone mining days occasionally surprise visitors. A mysterious piece of equipment, resembling a contemporary sculpture, stands as a silent sentinel in a forgotten corner. The curators of the Oya History Museum recognize the artistic and architectural allure of their site, incorporating genuine art into the atmosphere. Notably, large arrangements of red sticks arranged in an Ikebana style and massive floral compositions, each occupying its own gallery, were crafted by renowned Ikebana artist Shogo Kakiyazaki. These installations add a unique artistic dimension to the underground space. Moreover, the museum serves as a versatile venue, hosting weddings and serving as a backdrop for films, 
TV dramas, commercials, and music videos. Fans of J-pop can enjoy video compilations featuring their favorite bands performing on an underground stage set against towering stone walls. Despite these uses, the museum maintains a restrained commercial presence, allowing visitors to fully appreciate the awe-inspiring experience of wandering through vast underground corridors. Natural openings in the ceiling occasionally offer glimpses of greenery and sky, along with fleeting rays of sunlight. This juxtaposition of natural beauty deep underground serves as a constant reminder of the unique environment in which visitors find themselves. Exploring all the chambers and passages of the museum takes less than an hour, yet the feeling persists that these underground spaces stretch endlessly, where a wrong turn might lead to getting lost. One compelling reason to linger before returning to the surface is the cavern's consistently cool temperature averaging 8 degrees Celsius throughout the year. On a recent scorching August day, while it was 34 degrees Celsius outside the museum's entrance, it was a refreshing 13 degrees Celsius in the depths below. This stark temperature contrast makes the museum particularly popular during summer. Despite the crowd, which might be daunting in pandemic times, the vast underground areas are well ventilated and spacious, ensuring a sense of safety and minimal congestion. The museum building above ground features a gallery that, while a bit crowded, is packed with exhibits detailing the history of the quarry. Highlights include a detailed 3D model of the mine, photographs and diagrams illustrating its excavation methods, along with a display of hand tools and machinery used for digging, cutting, and transporting stone. Samples of various types and sizes of cut stone are showcased, alongside local archaeological discoveries demonstrating the stone's diverse uses over centuries, from gate posts to water cisterns. One corner of the gallery pays homage to Frank Lloyd Wright and his iconic Imperial Hotel, renowned for surviving the 1923 Kanto earthquake due to its Oya stone construction. Outside the museum building, a spacious plaza hosts a large gift shop filled with Oya stone souvenirs and a charming cafe. Walking around the grounds, Visitors enjoy spotting how Oya stone aesthetics have been incorporated into various objects. Among the most creative is a soft drink vending machine cleverly designed to resemble something out of the Flintstones. The museum's surroundings encompass several active mines, but the majority of the area is dedicated to tourism. Visitors can explore beautifully landscaped parks nestled beneath the imposing cliffs, offering a serene environment for relaxation and exploration. Among the highlights is the historic Oyaji Temple, home to an impressive image of the Bodhisattva Canon meticulously carved into the cliff face. Just a short distance down the road, you'll find an even more magnificent stone sculpture of the same deity, the towering Peace Cannon, which stands at an awe-inspiring 27 meters high. This colossal statue is a testament to the region's rich cultural heritage and the enduring allure of Oya stone artistry. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Deep in the lush forests of Japan, hidden from the probing eyes of modern civilization, scientists discovered a pre-flood structure in Japan that man could never build. This ancient mystery was guarded by towering megaliths. Each stone stood sentinel, weathered by millennia of rain and wind, whispering tales of ancient wisdom and forgotten rites. Archaeologists, drawn by whispers of the pre-flood structure that surpassed human construction, ventured cautiously into the cave's yawning mouth. Inside, torchlight flickered against walls adorned with intricate carvings, telling a story of a people who communed with nature's spirits. The air was thick, with a palpable sense of reverence and mystery as if the stones themselves held secrets too profound for mortal understanding. Among the scholars was a young archaeologist, whose eyes gleamed with excitement. She traced the patterns etched into the stones, feeling a connection to a past that seemed to defy the laws of history. The team uncovered artifacts, tools forged with craftsmanship that hinted at a civilization older than any recorded in textbooks. As they delved deeper, the cave seemed to breathe with a life of its own, revealing chambers untouched by time. In the heart of the labyrinthine structure, they found a mural depicting a great deluge, 
the waters parting to reveal a world forever changed. The discovery left them awestruck, humbled by the realization that some mysteries were never meant to be unraveled by man alone. Unraveling Ancient Mysteries A closer look at the Oya Stone Quarry reveals that we're faced with an immense puzzle, similar to the mysteries surrounding megalithic sites worldwide. These ancient builders had a deep understanding of their craft. Moving 20-ton megaliths into place with such precision wasn't a feat of amateurs. It indicates a hidden knowledge and expertise we have yet to fully grasp. The dating of many megalithic sites may need to be re-evaluated to uncover their true origins. In Korea, a land rich in history and cloaked in mystery, lies a secret that has puzzled archaeologists and historians for ages. Scattered across its rugged terrain are thousands of megalithic structures known as dolmens, standing as silent sentinels from a bygone era. Were these colossal stone structures merely tombs for the elite, as some scholars propose, or do they hint at a time when giants roamed the earth, leaving their monumental imprints on the landscape? The Korean dolmens, both mysterious and monumental like the Oya Stone Quarry, have always held a revered place in local folklore. To ancient Koreans, these structures were not only significant landmarks, but also sacred sites, possibly constructed by giants or legendary heroes, as suggested by ancient myths. This deep cultural recognition means that the discovery of dolmens is not merely a historical event, but a woven part of Korea's mythology and heritage. Many ancient cultures preserved memories of a high civilization from prehistory, reflected in these enduring structures. Systematic documentation of these megalithic structures began during Korea's tumultuous period of Japanese occupation from 1910 to 1945. Japanese archaeologists, including notable researchers like Seino Tadashi, undertook the first formal studies of the dolmens, their goal was to catalog and understand the peninsula's prehistoric landscape, an effort that also involved asserting control over Korea's cultural heritage. These early surveys marked the first detailed mapping and description of the dolmens, transforming them from elements of folklore into subjects of archaeological and historical significance. Following the Korean War, South Korea dedicated itself to rebuilding its national identity which sparked a renewed interest in preserving its rich cultural heritage. This revival led to more focused and localized studies of dolmens. By the late 20th century, Korean archaeologists began using modern techniques such as radiocarbon dating, detailed site excavations, and advanced technologies like 3D scanning and GIS systems. These tools provided a more accurate understanding of the dolmen's age, construction methods, and original purpose, deepening appreciation for these ancient structures. Not everyone knows that carbon dating can only date organic material, not stone. The turn of the millennium brought international recognition to this intriguing facet of Korean heritage, when several dolmen sites were designated as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. This prestigious status underscores the significant archaeological value of the dolmens, and highlights their importance in understanding the prehistoric era on the Korean peninsula. Our understanding of prehistory must evolve with these findings. This recognition not only boosts preservation efforts, but also fosters a global appreciation for Korea's ancient monumental wonders. The transportation and assembly of these massive Korean dolmens, as well as the Japanese Oya stone structures, offer a fascinating study of prehistoric engineering. The stones used in dolmen construction were often colossal, sometimes weighing several tons. Moving such heavy stones over long distances posed a formidable challenge that required ingenious solutions. It is believed that the ancient builders employed logs as rollers under the stones, a technique known as log rolling. This method significantly reduced friction, allowing human or animal power to transport these massive stones efficiently. This technique bears a striking resemblance to those used in constructing Stonehenge in England and the Moai statues of Easter Island, where similar log-based systems were employed to maneuver large stones across rugged terrains. Upon arriving at the construction site, 
The next major challenge was lifting and accurately positioning these massive stones. To achieve this, the ancient builders likely created earth ramps by piling up soil and stones, enabling them to elevate the stones to the required height. In conjunction with these ramps, they would have used levers and simple wooden frameworks to hoist the stones into place. The levers, providing a mechanical advantage, allowed smaller groups of people to perform these monumental tasks. This method not only highlights their technical knowledge, but also underscores their effective teamwork and resource management skills. Crafting Ancient Marvels Similar to the meticulous work done on Oya stones, the Korean dolmens were carefully shaped and smoothed after quarrying to ensure a perfect fit during construction. This process involved large-scale shaping to create flat surfaces for the capstones, as well as detailed work to guarantee the structural stability of the dolmen. The final smoothing of the stones was likely achieved using abrasion techniques, employing sand or smaller stones to grind down the surfaces, ensuring that each piece fit together seamlessly. The strategic placement and precise alignment of these structures highlight an advanced knowledge of astronomy and engineering. The placement of the dolmens was not random, but carefully aligned with specific astronomical events, such as the solstices. This suggests that just as the Oya stones held a celestial and esteemed status during the Heian period in Japan, the dolmens served dual purposes, functioning both as tombs and as astronomical observatories. The precision required for such alignment indicates that the builders possessed a sophisticated understanding of astronomy and geometry, which is quite remarkable for any prehistoric society. This understanding points to the possibility that these monuments have origins dating back 12,000 years, underscoring their significance in both geological and astronomical contexts. The process of installing dolmens also reveals a deep understanding of structural stability. To secure a solid foundation, builders dug deep pits for the upright supporting stones, ensuring they could bear the immense weight of the capstone without shifting. This demonstrates a sophisticated grasp of soil mechanics, showing knowledge ahead of its time. Additionally, the upright stones were often positioned at a slight inward angle. This strategic placement evenly distributed the weight of the capstone, significantly enhancing the dolmen's stability and durability. Comparing these construction methods with those of ancient Egypt reveals intriguing similarities and differences. These cultures employed ramps, and levers to maneuver large stones into place. However, their purposes and accessibility diverged significantly. Egyptian pyramids were primarily elaborate tombs for pharaohs and the elite, symbolizing a hierarchical society. In contrast, Korean dolmens served broader societal functions across different social classes, reflecting a more inclusive and communal approach to monument building. The meticulous approach to constructing and placing dolmens not only guaranteed their endurance, but also bestowed upon them considerable astronomical significance, firmly embedding them in Korea's historical narrative. These dolmen sites provide a glimpse into Korea's Neolithic and Bronze Age epochs, showcasing the advanced engineering prowess and deep-rooted cultural customs of their creators. These stones vary widely in size, ranging from one to seven meters in length and often surpassing a meter in thickness. Such diversity hints at varying burial practices and societal structures across different regions. Additionally, some dolmens likely served purposes beyond burial, possibly marking territorial boundaries or hosting ceremonial activities. It required not only considerable physical labor, but also meticulous planning and the collective effort of entire communities. Just as dolmen builders carefully selected and shaped stones to fit seamlessly into their structures, so too did those who worked with Oya stone to ensure its precise fitting and stability in construction. Both demonstrate a profound understanding of stone manipulation and construction techniques that were advanced for their respective times. However, while dolmens focused on monumental structures linked to cultural practices and astronomy, Oya stone was utilized for practical and aesthetic purposes in architecture and art, showcasing different aspects of ancient technological and cultural achievements. What do you think about the Oya stone quarry? 
Let us know your opinion in the comments below.